Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So today we are going to do lead code weekly challenge. First question. So let us first read this question. So here, number of beautiful pairs. Number of beautiful pairs. Okay. So you are given a zero index in T J array nums. A pair of indices i j where i and j basically lies between zero and nums dot length. Is called beautiful as the first digit of nums of i and the last digit of nums of j are co-prime. And we are required to return total number of beautiful pairs in this nums. So basically, input variable is given to us. Here we need to figure out with the two numbers, and in those two numbers, we basically not just two numbers. We are required to figure out with several pairs which are basically co-prime, and those. Pairs are co-prime in such a manner that the first number which we have chosen, so the first digit of that number and the last digit of the second number of that pair, they should be co-prime. So that is the trick in this question, and we need to solve by doing some mathematical thing in that part only. Basically, extracting the digit of a number. That is the only thing which we need to do extra. As I think is, we just need to figure out whether GCD equal equals to one, which they have already explained us that what exactly a co-prime is. Now, let us first check for the constraint. So constraint, as you can see, are pretty much low. That only hundred numbers would be given to us, and minimum two numbers would be always there. So one pair would be always there. The possibility of one pair is always there, which is a co-prime. And each number present in that could go up to triple, uh, oh, chopper nine. And when we do modulo by ten, it is never equal to zero. So this is also one of the thing. Accordingly, we can go ahead that yeah, there is one edge case regarding that GCD also, and that uh, when we figure out with single digits. Of a particular number, so that is already they have given that that won't be a possibility there. So that's how we got idea from the constraint. So these SPSs we don't need to consider. Now it becomes pretty much straightforward question that we just need to run loops and we just need to check for each of the numbers which are given here and figure out those pairs which are co-prime. So that is the thing which we are required to do here. But now the thing is that in the contest I was able to figure out the n square solution, and so I will be presenting that n square solution only. For time being, I hadn't figured out with any more optimized solution for the same. That only I'll go ahead with. So the thing is that we will be going ahead with two for loops. Basically, two nested loops would be there, and according to that only we will be figuring out with the pair. So what optimization in that also? We can do that. I will show you while coding. So now, how we need to code for this is we will be taking one for loop, which will run from i is equal to zero till our length n, and there would be another for loop which will run from j is equal to i plus one. So that we are not considering this particular again, right? And it will again go till n. Now the thing is, as in the question it is mentioned, that we need first digit, right? So for that first digit, we will be here in this portion only. We will be just figuring out what is the first digit of this particular, and then here we will be just simply finding out the GCD with the inbuilt function provided by C plus plus. Else we could also write our own function. Means basically here we will be then writing just our function. Means calling that function and we'll write our function separately. But here I'm just using the inbuilt function GCD. At here, that first digit would be first digit. I'll write comma. How I need to find the last digit of my this uh, number which I get from this loop would be just I'll go ahead with nums of j modulo 10. So this will give me the last digit of this particular number which I'll get from this particular loop. So if this is equal equals to one. Then in that context only, I will be incrementing my count. Else, the thing would be as it is. And at the end, we just need to return this count only, right? 
so that is how we are required to code this question so now let us go ahead with the coding part for the same so i have pretty much explained but yeah let us go ahead so int is equal to num start size now we will take our first for loop in which what we are going to do is we just need to take for the first digit here and how we need to figure out with the first digit is we here only will have a num which would be nums of i so while my num is basically greater than zero as it can't be equal to zero which is already mentioned here right this is in zero then in that context what i will be doing is as i just need to find the digit right so my first digit equals to num modulo 10 and this will go ahead until this will be ongoing process and this will go ahead until it remains greater than this right now my another for loop this for loop is for the purpose that i get my pair right so here then j less than n j plus plus and this now what i need to do is here i need to call that gcd function this is the inbuilt gcd function given by c uh, C++ library. So here, what we need to go ahead is with the first digit, comma, nums of j. And that also we do modulo by ten. And after doing this, if it is equals to one, so now this also should be in if condition. So if it is equals to one, then only we will be incrementing our count. So take our count. Yes. So this is the thing which we will be doing, and then at the end we are required to return this count. So this is all which we are required to do. And as you can clearly see here, it nested loops are there. So that's why the time complexity of the solution becomes order of n into n, and the space complexity is order of one only because you are not using an extra space but you would be also wondering about this but here you can clearly see that the num of i is up to this means only four digits are there so only four times this particular loop will run so that's why we are considering its time complexity is order of one only as this time complexity would also have been counted you see and clearly either write it here that it could go up to four only so this is the thing and now let us run our code so here actually i have coded before also i'm just coding it so yeah here it got accepted so this was all for this particular question so let us i'll make the other question in another video so if there's any doubt about this question you could comment it down so yeah, that's all. Thank you.